I'm Edie Lush, and I'm here with Jacques Lavoisier. Edie, always How a are you? Oh, wow. Fantastic. I'm with you. All right. Okay. So, founder of DJs for Good. Part of Davos is the social interaction, and we cannot have social interaction without music, right? Absolutely. How has that changed, do you think, since the last two years when we couldn't be together? What does that mean now? I think there is the pleasure of physical presence with people, having very laid back conversations. And that is the mood of the parties this year. Mm, Nothing it's very crazy. different. Absolutely. Totally chilled out. We never seen each other in any party in Davos over the past decade, but had you been attending some parties, <laughs> you would have seen lots of people dancing, having lots of fun. Yeah. Um, although it remains not as crazy as what we can enjoy on the Riviera, etc., mm. but lots of fun. This year, it's all about being together again. This mm. togetherness is really the big plus. And music is definitely a part of that, right? So what have you yeah. noticed as you've been DJing up and down the promenade? I've been DJing every evening at the penthouse okay. on top of uh, Hotel Europe. Feels like a new space to me. Yes, and it's um, very exclusive, no social media. People come there to have their conversations. So for me, it was good to DJ old tunes, vinyl records, nice. soul, soul music from the 70s, some jazz, and uh, also to see how it affected the way people um, would interact with each other physically. Well, you could see that depending on the music, they would use their hands or mm. have certain kinds of facial expressions. It's very cool. What, um, you know, we've, we, we were partnering with Unity. Um, mm. the, the importance of, um, of the way you listen to music is also really important. Uh, and I wonder, how do you think about, um, has that changed at all during the pandemic? Do you feel like people want to be together listening to music or is it still people want to do it on their own? I think it's both. Uh, and maybe they listen too much to music on their, on own. their own. And the sharing. I, um, once again, it was such a very um, mellow atmosphere that mm. I could overhear some conversation. It was good to see uh, to hear people not just talking about business, about Davos, but mm. about the tune they were listening. Right. Uh, an old Nina Simone at the penthouse, you nice. know, late at night and people sharing um, what they're doing. And I think that the sharing part with music is, is unbelievable. Something that um, the rebirth of the vinyl record mm. industry is also contributing to the physicality. We love it. So in my entire family, we spent the entire pandemic buying vinyl records, listening to them together. It was, um, it was actually so fun to be able to um, teach our kids about the music that we'd loved. My husband got so into it, in fact, that we now have an entire wall dedicated to our favorite uh, we vinyl. Have in, we have this in common. <laughs> and the fact that kids cannot skip very easily yeah. um, from a song to another. The pleasure of listening to an entire album, the, co the concept of a concept mm. album, um, I think that's very important. And uh, I've been trying uh, the those, headphones. yeah, the, the Unity headphones, dj with them. Excellent also to be able to um, have a different kind of listening. Mm. High fidelity audio, I'm an audiophile, I'm a geek. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we shared a lot about that in the past. and. Um, I love the fact that Hope Culture has been partnering with High Fidelity Sound. Mm. Uh, it makes it me love you guys even more. You know, we didn't pay you for that plug, but thank you, <laughs> Jacques. Um, so DJs for Good, we can't leave that concept behind. Tell us, remind us again what it is and how it's grown as well. Well, it's grown despite the pandemic. DJs for Good is a very simple concept. When you think about how popular or how pop figures DJs have become mm. over the past decades, no one was leveraging DJs um, five years ago in order to convey positive messages to support charities. And this is what DJs for Good is about. There's DJs that are playing, making people dance or enjoying their conversations, mm -hmm. as in the case here. And um, at least 50% of a DJ fee goes to a charity. Mm -hmm. um, Who are you supporting this year? Um, so this year, it's a lot about physical mm -hmm. and uh, mental disability. Mm -hmm. The Mark Pollock Trust we're going mm -hmm. to support. We're going to support the Rodrigo Mendes Institute 
and the Esteban Bulrich Foundation for SLA. Mm -hmm. um, friends of mine, it's uh, very, I'm a bit emotional on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I may, I want to thank our generous donors, uh, Trade Shift once again. Um, they've been there with us from uh, the get-go, the uh, inception of uh, GGS for Good. DCVC, Data Collective uh, VC, and uh, Strombag Ventures mm -hmm. who have been tremendously supportive and uh, really grateful, and the organizations are grateful too. It's a lot of different organizations. How have you done this all on your own? I have some help, <laughs> oh. especially this year uh, where I was double booked. Uh -huh. um, DJs for Good has been thanks to you guys because every year you gave me the opportunity to share the progress and what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. And this year, there was so much demand that I had to bring a partner in crime or a partner in music. Let's bring the partner oh, in crime onto the, into the studio. Uh, the mighty Greg Lyon, a dear friend <laughs> of mine. And I, uh, I flew him uh, from, uh, from France uh, to support us and to be able to help all these organizations. And I think it's a teamwork. And I want to thank also all the DJs who are part of our movement. Thank you very much, um, all of you, for, for both of you, for, for joining us and for sharing the good sound. I'm Edie Lush.